Alex Vanover, you know, the former multi-GP champion of the world, the current DRL ESPN champion of the world, says that he's going to start racing digital quads. Why? Because it has to do with the amount of fun that he's having racing. And when I'm authentically expressing myself and being true to my true core, I'm the best in the world. When I'm having fun, I'm the best in the world. John here, guys. And today we're talking about the DJI FPV digital system and multi-GP racing. Now, for those non-racers, multi-GP is the biggest governing body um, around the world drone racing championships the one where any local member can find a local chapter register and go fly and get ranked on the worldwide global leaderboards this is the america hd that i flew at the weekend qualifier just a couple of days ago <laughs> you can see i still actually have a piece of gate stuck in this motor but i wanted to fly dji the entire qualifier if i could as kind of a test. So we had one chapter run a, another timing system that's more friendly to this digital HD system. The issue that we're all kind of struggling with right now as a community is that this system has, um, in order to achieve the image that it does, a variable latency, um, variable power output. So some will say that messes with your image in your mind. Some will say it doesn't. Some, I particularly say at racing distances, I don't really notice any of that variable latency. If you do go farther, um, you may, but a lot of people that are saying that are confusing the two. But the variable power output is a real issue. You see how it works is on a regular analog quadcopter, your video transmitter is transmitting at a specific frequency on a specific power output. And the way the timing systems work is as you pass by that start and gate where that timing system resides, your power output and frequency will be detected and that's how it detects a lap. That works great for the analog um, low resolution quadcopters that we've been flying up until now. Now with the DJI system, this has a variable power output. Now what does that mean? The, the system has four antennas to both receive and transmit data back. Now that back and forth data also does things like let it know how strong the image is. Now what that does is it allows it to vary the power output. So if you're super close, the image is super fine, your bandwidth and bit rate is all the way at the top, it says, I don't need to put full power out right now, and it may reduce that power. Now this is an issue with, one, the way that DJI varies its output power, two, the way that the Immersion RC eight-way timing system, the most popular timing system, measure those times, and three, the way that the live time software that interfaces with that timing um, device counts those times. And so the chapter that ran an alternate timing system was able to accurately capture all of the times by the DJI system, but the entire chapter's times were disqualified. Apparently there is some fine print somewhere, um, maybe not some not so fine print, but it is a rule that says that it has to be on live time. Apparently multi-GP is contractually obligated to only work with live time at the time being. I understand that that contract is gonna be up and maybe open to alternate sources next year, but for this season, because of that rule in place, um, that entire chapter's times were voided. And that was kind of a really disappointing thing. I offered to give whoever was the fastest person um, whose time was voided, um, a, a little bind and fly quad just to kind of make some of that sting go away. That's not a stab at multi GP. I mean, they did kind of have the rule out there. Um, so I wanted to be able to try and fly DJI on the lifetime system to see if I could get a time on the board. Now, why? Why did I even bother doing this? I have a number of analog racing quads that I could have flown that would have counted 100%. This week, Alex Vanover really clarified something that I've been feeling on myself when I've been choosing to race DJI. And I'm not one of the top racers in the world. I'm typically in the sportsman class. Right now I'm in the pro class, but I probably fall to the sportsman class. And 
that's where I have the most fun on the track with a group of friends, having a good time, getting some laps. And I do like to get ranked once per year just to know how my progress has been. But why would I not fly the quad that I've been flying? You know, I've had so much more fun racing these past few months on the DJI system. Alex Vanover, you know, the former multi GP champion of the world, the current DRL ESPN champion of the world says that he's going to start racing digital quads. Why? Is it going to make him faster? No, it might make him slower, but because it has to do with the amount of fun that he's having racing. Uh, by taking any of those ingredients out, if you're not having fun, you can't perform at your peak performance. You know, I've really, through over the years, studied things like peak physical or mental performance, you know, just in people in general. If you've ever read the Malcolm Gladwell book, Outliers, you know about the 10,000 hour rule. And if you've ever read uh, Mihaly Chik Singhai's uh, studies on achieving flow state, now, this is something I'm borrowing from a channel that I follow called Mind Smash. He Framing a fight as fun is a way to establish that feeling of relaxation. It's how he feels confident and content in one of the most ruthless environments in civilized society. The man, he's just himself. He enjoys expressing himself. He has that lightness, that spark we carry when we are children. But one of the advantages that people that operate at that level have a lot of time is they're training themselves on how to enter flow state. Flow, when a sense of challenge, the stress and anxiety feel high, but you feel able, relaxed, confident amongst that pressure, that is when you were switched on to your peak performance state. And if you go back to some of those videos a few years ago where Vanover is over there with Justin Skinner tech, talking about race techniques, he talks about how he learns a track in pieces, the same way that as a piano player, he would also learn a song. That means that he flies by memory, not so much by sight. I fly by sight. Some of the top people fly mostly by memory. So when he's on the course, he's literally operating this instrument of flight, you know, performing this symphony of motion in order to achieve that. And a hundred percent, you have to be able to achieve a flow state and you have to be able to be having the maximum amount of fun in order to do that. If you start taking things too seriously, if you're no longer relaxed, you can't achieve at that high peak performance level. And that's why like some of the best fighters of today, like Israel Adesanya, really keeps things light. You know, he's having fun. And that's an incredible component into achieving and performing at your highest level. So he's deciding unilaterally, you have to just have fun first and foremost. Israel Adesanya through this, well, through his career, signifies something I've been desperately trying to share with the world. You aren't incompetent. You aren't lacking. You just don't have any fun. The moment you do, moment you choose to, I promise, you'll be surprised by how good you get. Now this may be different for those pilots in the top 50. Pilots in the top, you know, 25 or 50 places, every millisecond counts. So I can see them saying, I don't care how great it is, how fun it is. If it's going to cost me that competitive edge, I'm not going to do it. And so for them, I totally understand. But for all of the other 950 or 1,000 people after them, I just want to go have the most fun. I don't care if I end up 190th place or 220th place on the leaderboards. I'm not going to the championships most likely. I want to have fun. And I'm going to have fun using the digital system because I can see better and it's just more enjoyable. You also have to remember who's going to be entering the hobby. Every year we lose a certain number of few hundred people that are racing and we gain a few more. It's been steady. It hasn't really been growing or dropping. It's been about 1,000 to 1,100 people a year participating in the MultiGB qualifier. So what's going to happen is there's an explosion in this DJI FPV system right now. They can't, none of the stores can keep the stuff on the shelves. It's flying off. So people entering the hobby today, if they have a budget of a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, they're going to start with some quality gear. Where does that leave them? DJI goggles. Nobody is going to jump in with Fat Shark anymore. It's just not something that's going to happen. 
So the people that are racing today, it is costly for them to convert all of their analog quads to digital. But somebody that's entering, it's cheaper for them to go digital and it's better for the most part. And I'm not gonna, you know, there's no argument to me there. Um, so when people show up for the first day at a race, they're gonna have these digital systems, especially next season. So this is something that everybody should be figuring out. So how does it work with the limitations of today? Well, we flew a five-person DJI heat. We kept all the DJI people together in one heat, five at a time. What we did was we flew 200 milliwatt setting. We flew channels one, two, four, five, and seven. Um, we did use lifetime so that the times would count. And I did know of the 10 actual runs that I got, I think four of them um, had times that had to be thrown up because the timing system wasn't picking me up correctly. So I was able to get on the boards. I had one of my faster times actually count, which is awesome. But I had four additional throwaways because of using this system. And so for some people, that's not really worth it. I had one crash out. So that means I had five good runs where I could really try. Um, I'm not sure if everybody on the day had the same experience. Some people may have had less. Some people may have only had four count. If they crash out a few times, they may only have had two or three chances. But I was willing to take that risk. I was not gonna switch to analog unless my DJI race quad just smashed and it could no longer operate. Whether I got a time on the boards or not, I was gonna stick it out, fly for this experiment. So I did run 10 full rounds, only DJI, zero analog laps for the whole day. The time I got was 50.7, that put me in 181 place at the pro class at the moment, but that probably won't stand. So what is the holdup? You can't place the blame on multi-GP, right guys? Because if you go back when DJI first came out, they really did try to work with them in order to get a timing system solution integrated into their workflow. But the DJI folks just kind of abandoned the project and multi-GP is just kind of like, well, I mean, we still got to keep racing, right? They can't put everything on hold just for DJI. So at this point, everyone is kind of frustrated in that racing community with DJI because they just kind of left them on the side, not really thinking they're important. Um, DJI, for whatever reason, didn't think that the racing community was worth the effort. So we have to show them that we are worth the effort. DJI has proven that they're exceptional at releasing meaningful, powerful, extremely useful updates. At the drop of a hat, the 50 megabit upgrade doubled the bit rate and they even saw an incredible improvement right just overnight on a whim just on a random tuesday so the fact that people think that dji just can't like that release a software update that would lock the power output levels and synchronize the frequency i mean it's just laughable they can do it whenever they want all we have to do is show them that as a financial you know community we are powerful enough we have enough buying power for that to be an important thing we're a community that's based around a hobby that center around, centers around technology so why is there so much resistance to technology that was some of the sentiment that was going on on some of the groups yesterday and i kind of have to agree i mean we're a community of people that figure things out so our outlook should be we don't have a solution today, but we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna make it happen and we're gonna integrate them into racing. And it will start with the bottom, work their way up, and the, and the intermediate folks that wanna run DJI, and eventually the faster folks will be the last to adopt. That's okay, you can be the last to adopt, but you can't hold back the evolution of the technology. It doesn't sit well. And so the problem is the low numbers. There's only about a thousand people that run this. This year, it's gonna be probably half. And so why would DJI give us any development attention with such a low number? If that number was 20 or 50 times greater, they would have already done it. So we have to show them that we're worth that development. Are we gonna allow the other timing systems? Because there are some timing systems that have solved this issue already. Um, can we allow those for 2020? That would kind of put a solution in place pretty much today that would work. Can we do that? I know there's people working towards it. The discussions are probably happening on the scene, but that's kind of what the things are. Reviewing the DVR. So pretty much DJI goggles, as soon as the arm DVR turns on, starts recording. So everybody that ran the qualifier this weekend has DVR of every run. 
Uh, we also had additional goggles so people could spectate. Um, I think we did this a few times, but not for every run. Uh, nobody had the DJI smart controller, which you can use to put onto a larger monitor that might become more and more prevalent over time. So what do you think of the comments, guys? Um, I think it's coming. There's no way that you can sit back and think that DJI, or not just DJI, digital, because Fat Shark is working on the Shark Bite uh, system, and it does look promising. It doesn't look nearly as good as in DJI, but if it solves the latency and the power issues, that would be another thing on the table. We want as many competitors out there. We really want that system and offering to be really strong and really good because that will give racers a true digital option and it will also give DJI some incentive to develop those missing pieces and integrate them into that system. Then we'd have two fully functioning systems competing against each other. We don't ever want one monopoly. We want more market entrants that are actually good that kind of drive that competition. You know, where would TBS be without Immersion RC to drive each other off of? That's what we need in the digital space. So let's embrace it. Um, we've proven that it does work, albeit with some sacrifices. Um, so what do you think, guys? Is anyone else ready? DJI, who's the fastest on the leaderboards running DJI? Um, there's got to be some people a lot faster than me that have done it. I'd like to hear what place if you're on the leaderboards you are in the comments below if you haven't run the dji system what do you think guys are we going to be ready for next year is it going to be 2022 before we figure it out i think we're a bunch of very smart industrious people and i think we can figure it out thanks guys